Hey everyone, it is Jen here and welcome. We are gonna do gardening with essential oils. You guys ready? I hope so. Please go ahead, let me know you're here. Let me know you can hear me. Hopefully everything is working well. I have a new system going on. I'm actually gonna check really quick. Let me make sure if I hit play over here. It looks like it is working. It looks like my sound's working, yay. Okay, so welcome everyone. Let me know where you're turning in from. And let's get a little bit started. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of essential oils and gardening. Are you guys gardeners? I hope so. I'm a little bit, I mean, you know what? I started about, um, probably about three years ago, and my first year I sucked. I was horrible. I didn't grow anything like the first year I did it, but I will let you know, I've gotten better over the last couple of years. Um, last year I had a phenomenal year. I had lots and lots of peppers, lots of tomatoes. So it is actually doable. So if you guys got to just learn a little bit, uh, one of the big key things I always noticed is the soil. If you start with really good soil, you're gonna get really good flowers and uh, all kinds of veggies and everything. So I'm gonna show you just a few things you can do with essential oils to make that experience even better. So, before we get started, I do wanna tell you about a giveaway I'm doing. So anyone who is going to be commenting in the next 24 hours, I'm gonna count this um, about, well, actually a little bit less than 24 hours. So tomorrow at about five o'clock on Friday, Central Time, Chicago time, I'm going to pick a winner. And all you gotta do to enter is comment. So either comment in the uh, chat here if you're live, if you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and comment in the YouTube comments. Any comment is gonna get you entered, and I'm gonna give away, I've got some uh, Young Living Essential uh, Insect Repellent, the nice, cool little individual packs. I love these, great for sticking to purses, diaper bags, cars, campers, everything. And I have a bottle of Citronella, which I'm gonna tell you later on how you can use. So, I got those things giving, I'm gonna be giving away, so go ahead and make sure you get entered. Super easy, just comment when you're here, let me know where you're tuning in from, or let me know what your gardening experience is. So, as I mentioned guys, I sucked at gardening at first. So, on the top left here, that's what I started with. I started with some raised garden beds, and oh God, it was horrible. It was very, very horrible. Until last year, what I did is I cut those legs off, and I stuck them in the ground. Game changer. When I put those into the ground, I was able to grow so many more things. Though I do have a challenge over in the top right, you can see there I've got some chickens. That is my biggest challenge chickens and my dogs peeing on my garden. So this year we expanded the garden because I actually proved to my husband that I can grow stuff. So we expanded the garden and we have a, a fence and a gate, and I actually put an arch in this year. I am so excited. I have planted a bunch of stuff. I cannot wait for it to actually grow. But so the key here is just keep going, keep learning, keep just keep at it. Um, as you can see, when I first started, all I got to grow were those like little onions right there. Yep, that was about it. I had a tomato plant in there, it died. I had a, a pepper plant, <laughs> totally died. <laughs> so keep going. Um, I don't have a picture. I should have put a picture in here of what my garden looked last year because it was very green. I had tomatoes, so many tomatoes, so many cucumbers, so many green poppers. It was awesome. So go ahead, guys. Make sure if you're not gardening already, give it a try. I did a couple videos on how I plan my garden and I also another one on, how, you know, a little bit of my garden tour and how it became. So go ahead, search YouTube. Not now, but search YouTube later and go take a look at those. All right, so what exactly are essential oils? I know some of you are probably tuning in, you are part of my team already, or you've heard of them already, but for those who don't know, essential oils are the lifeblood life blood of a plant. So basically, it is, you know, a lot of times they take plants, they take the stems, they take the leaves, they take the fruit, whatever, and they distill it, and you have this magical stuff that is essential oil. So it can actually be used topically, it can be used aromatically, it can use internally, and you can use it in your garden, like I'm gonna show you here. So there are so many ways to use essential oils. And I want, you know, tonight I'm gonna to show you a couple that you can use in your garden, and it is just awesome because 
it is a great way to get rid of some of the pesticides and some of the other stuff that you might use. Let's switch them out and use this stuff. It is less toxic, it's great for you, it's great for the environment, and your garden is going to love you. Now, a lot of the uh, oils that I talk about here are Young Living Oils. That's the brand that I use. It's the brand that I trust. Please, please, please do not use the oils from the big box store. Uh, a lot of times those have toxic chemicals in them. If you're paying under $5 for a bottle of oil, unless it's lemon, it is probably not actually essential oil. It's probably, you know, a couple chemicals, some fragrance, and a bunch of other crap in there. So make sure you do use really good essential oils. There is no FDA regulations on them, so that is why you need to use a brand that you trust. So again, the one that I use is Young Living. You, there are other good brands out there, but just make sure you research the brand that you're using so you're not sticking bad chemicals in there because you know this is one of the things we're trying to get away from <laughs> not add more all right so first up there here is a recipe so you're gonna see there's gonna be a bunch of recipes and if you haven't already there is a link down below and you can um, opt in and get a PDF it's gonna have all the recipes it's actually going to have a garden little planning uh, PDF <laughs> in there too that's gonna help you plan for your garden so go ahead and make sure you opt into that get this because otherwise you got to keep taking screenshots and you know it's kind of annoying and uh you know whatever floats your boat go to go whichever way so this one is called tackle the outdoors so you can use this on yourself or you can actually use this on uh your pets you can use this on even even your plants too. So um, if you're gonna use it in your plants, please use it in the evening so that the sun doesn't like scorch them. Um, I usually will sometimes spray it like around the dirt and not on the actual plant. It kind of depends on how bad the infestation is. So this one's called outdoor spray. It's actually, it's, it's a great way to keep bugs off you, to keep all the little critters off of you. And it is, it's uh, just grab yourself a four ounce glass spray bottle. And it is important to use glass because we are using lemon oil and lemon oil sometimes can eat plastic. So you don't wanna do that. So glass bottle is best. So you just take a glass bottle, you do a little bit of witch hazel, which you can find. Um, Target's got it, Walgreens got it, CVS, any type of drugstore or big box store, Walmart probably has it. So you're just gonna take witch hazel, witch hazel <laughs> distilled water, a little bit of thieves essential oil, some lemon essential oil, rosemary, and citronella. So if you're not familiar with it, thieves is a blend that is um, that is only you can find from Young Living. So you will kind of need that one to get this outdoor spray made. So all you do is put this all in a spray bottle and you can just spray yourself, spray your plants. Again, don't spray the plants in the morning, spray them in the evening so that they don't get burned by the sun. So this is great, I love it. I also love uh, Young Living actually has insect spray, which you saw in the giveaway. That's another fabulous one to use. Either one, good to go. All right, so pets in the garden. Who's got pets? Go ahead, put in the chat, let me know. <laughs> I have dogs and I have chickens that love to get in my garden. So this is a DIY Pets Be Gone recipe. And I will tell you, I've been using this. You probably can't see it right now. Nope, it's out of frame. But I have a plant over here and I've been using this inside, not just outside. Actually, outside I don't have too much problem because we get the fence around the garden. But I use this inside in one of my plants. And I use, uh, I just actually put rosemary oil right onto the, I have actually like, here I'll show you. I actually just have this little paper clip, it's Snoopy, and it, but it's felt. So I just put a couple drops of rosemary on it and I stick it in my plant and my cat stays out of it. I cannot believe it works. I was having such a hard time. My cat kept eating my plant and uh, it was really annoying because I really wanted some plants in my office. But I put a little bit of rosemary on there, she stays away. So with this Pets Be Gone recipe, you just add uh, essential oil, either black pepper or rosemary, either one. Uh, just put it in some, a shallow pan of water and then you can add some like strips of clothing or washcloths, um, old t-shirts, whatever, and you just let it soak in there. 
So when you let it soak in there and then you let it dry and then you just add that fabric around your plants, either inside, outside, wherever they are. And so cats don't like the smell of rosemary. So they'll kind of like stay away from it. And the dogs don't like the black pepper. So if you're trying to keep the dogs away, use black pepper. Cats, use rosemary. So uh, it's just basically they just don't like the smell so they just don't go near the plants, which is great. Easy peasy and it's non-toxic so you don't have to worry about you know anyone getting sick. All right, so the next one is unwanted and unpleasant growth. So who has trouble with weeds? We all do, right? Especially it's getting to be starting to in the Midwest anyways, getting to be hot. The weeds are starting to grow like crazy. Waiting for all my flowers to grow, but you know, those weeds are growing. So one of the things that I can use, I will use this uh, first recipe up here, which is cinnamon bark and distilled water. So I have also before added in um, vinegar. So sometimes I do that too. But if you mix those, I actually mix it in a, a big gallon sprayer. So I'll like double or triple this recipe. So I do it in a big gallon sprayer and I just spray the weeds that way. I have an acre land. I have lots of weeds, so that's what I use. <laughs> so you just mix it all up and you just spray it on whatever you don't want. And then hopefully it'll wither away and die. Um, <laughs> now the opposite is a plant love spray. So this one is tea tree, peppermint, citronella, and distilled water. So you add those together and that will uh, actually help your plant. So that one is uh, a nice one too to use. So again, don't worry about copying these down. You can download the PDF that is below and all of this, all of these recipes are in there. So the other thing I wanna talk about is companion plants. Has anyone ever done this? Have you companion plants? I, over the winter, I spent a ton of time, not so much this winter, but last winter, just watching YouTube videos about how to garden. And one of the things that I came across a lot was companion planting. So this year, this not this year, but this past uh, growing season, I grew tomatoes in conjunction with my basil. And oh my gosh, I cannot believe how much a difference that made. My tomatoes went like crazy. So one of the things you can do is you can companion plant, and you can see here there's a chart on the screen so like green beans, they like lavender or basil. Broccoli loves basil or thyme. Carrots love sage, so do cucumbers. Onions are German chamomile. And potatoes are basil, sage, and then tomatoes is basil. So say for instance, you don't like sage or you don't like basil. Well, instead of actually planting the plant, you can use the essential oils. So you just use 10 to 15 drops of the essential oil and add to a four ounce spray bottle and then um, just shake it up and just kind of spray it around there and it acts a lot like the same thing. So it, this is also great if you're growing um, somewhere where you don't have a lot of space. So, so instead of actually planting the basil, which actually basil doesn't take too much room, but sage takes a little bit more room. So instead of actually having to plant a sage plant, you can just spray it with the sage oil. So a little little bit of a tip there. All right, so how about a recipe for a pollinator party? <laughs> Who doesn't like a party, right? So this one is great because you know a lot of stuff in your garden that needs pollinators to actually make fruit, like your cucumbers, your pumpkins. They need the bugs and stuff to come and pollinate your fruit. That way you're gonna get more. So this is basically like a pollinator attractor. So you're gonna do six to eight drops of lavender, six to eight drops of orange, and then four ounces of distilled water. Mix them all in a spray bottle, shake it, and then just spray it around where you want to attract the pollinators. So this again, uh, if you don't have the space to plant flowers or anything else to attract the pollinators, this spray is awesome because it doesn't, you know, you don't have to take up the room and it's just quick and easy and you just spray it and hopefully everybody will come by and pollinate all of your, your garden. Okay, so the other thing is tending the harvest. So once you've actually harvested all of your fruit, you gotta clean it, right? So one of the super easy ways is to use the Thieves Fruit and Veggie Soak. 
So uh, if you guys have never used it before, it is amazing. The dirt and the grime and the crap that comes off your vegetables, I cannot believe it. Uh, go ahead, go search like YouTube. There's lots of different videos of people like soaking their fruit and just showing how dirty the water is. So that is the super easy way. The other way you could do it is you can make your own. And so what you would do is you would basically fill up your sink with some water and then you would add two drops of basil, two drops of peppermint, two drops of lavender, two drops of cloves, and two drops of eucalyptus radia. So, and then you just soak your fruit in that or your fruit veggies in that, then just rinse it off and you're good to go. So again, super easy, love it. It will get off of all of the uh, crap that is on your, especially if you're buying them from the supermarket because you have no idea what's going on, your fruit and stuff there. And then it's clean, there's no toxins. There, you know, a lot of times dish soap contains uh, sulfites, uh, formaldehyde, phosphates, you're not getting any of that stuff when you do a natural method. All right, so the other thing is canning season. Who cans? Anyone? Does anyone can? So I have not started canning yet, but I will be this year. So oh, I see a couple there, a couple. <laughs> yeah, um, so that is definitely one thing I wanna get into. I actually just ordered my All-American canner. I've been waiting forever. So hopefully it will ship in May. They've been like back ordered since last fall. So I'm hoping mine will ship very quickly because I'm hoping to have a whole bunch of stuff in my garden this year to be able to can. But a lot of, one of the things that people do can a lot is spaghetti sauce, right? I know I have a son who eats pasta all the time. So I am definitely going to try it and can a lot of spaghetti sauce. So if you don't actually grow oregano or if you have to go purchase it, sometimes, you know, that's a, it's just kind of a pain. And you, or if you run out, like I do, run out all the time, what you can do is you can use oregano essential oil. So in this case, uh, all you need is a, you know, your regular, you know, I think it's, what's the big one, the quart size uh, of pasta so, or of your tomatoes. You can add in whatever other spices you want, and you can also add in oregano oil. And the thing is, you only need like two to three drops because the oregano oil is so concentrated and is so powerful that you only need two to three drops for that whole big old pint or quart or pint. I think it's a pint. Oh, I don't know. Someone can correct me. I'm not into canning yet, so I don't know what the sizes are. But the size that's in the picture right there, that one. Um, so yeah, so that's all that you need. It is so powerful that the, you know, because the, the oils are so concentrated. So it's also great. I like to keep them around anyways. I keep a, like oregano, basil, thyme. I keep all of those in my kitchen. And mostly because, I mean, when you go and you purchase, a, you know, fresh oregano or fresh parsley, any of that stuff, it's great and I love it, but it doesn't last very long. It only lasts a couple, you know, maybe three weeks you can get it to stretch and then you gotta go purchase some more. So, it, you know, having the Vitality uh, spice or, or herbs oils are, I think, a great addition for your kitchen because you can store them, they store forever and then you just, you have them. So I love having that. All right, so here's a little love for the gardener. So we know how much stress gardening can put onto your body, especially this past weekend, I am redoing, I started redoing the whole side of our house. I'm turning it into a far flower farm and I had to move a ton of rock. Oh my gosh, I was so, so sore, but I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna so love it when it actually comes up with flowers. So you have to follow me. And I will do a little uh, video on when the flowers actually come up. So I'm so excited. But oils are awesome for the gardener too. So when you get all that achy stuff, you know, when you when you when you're as old as I am and you work all weekend moving rock, your body gets very very sore. So the deep relief roller, awesome. There's also the Panaway, which is another great one. It's it's a very like winter green, almost Bengay kind of like. And Young Living also has a pain cream, which is again like very Bengay-ish, I guess you call it. 
but it is there's no chemicals in it there's no bad stuff in it so it is fabulous so you can treat yourself to one of those you can also make one of these a diy smoothing sticks which is not really a stick it's more of a roller ball but it's it's uh just great it's just great for your skin it's great for uh you know your rough hands so you put five drops of lavender oil five drops of purification and three drops of peppermint and then you add a carry of your choice so you put these all into there's like little 10 millimeter roller balls let me get one here's one right here just like these little roller balls they're just you know you add uh, the oil in them and they have, this one's plastic. Don't go buy the plastic ones, they're crap. Go with the metal ones. But, so you just add in your oil, you add a little carrier oil. I kind of like to use the fractionated coconut oil. And if you guys go, I have a whole video on how to do roller balls. But you just use whatever carrier oil you have. You can also use olive oil, uh, it's a good one. So you just add them all in there, add all of the oils in there, fill the rest up with your carrier oil, shake it, Whenever you need it, you know, put it on your hands, put it on your back, your neck, wherever you need it. Just great. This is actually a hocus focus. This is one for focusing. But there, there are so great. All right. So I know I went. I think I went too fast. I gotta slow myself down all the time. <laughs> but if you guys want to get into the oils with the gardening, one, make sure you download that booklet because it's got all of the recipes in it. It's got some other extra stuff in it. It's a little bit of a you know planning guide and all that kind of stuff. And then if you wanna get into the oils and wanna get started with Young Living, which I think everybody does, everyone has to. If you're not in it already, you should definitely be in it. Um, right now you can do, if you follow this link, and I will put this link, ooh, let me see, put it in the chat here too. I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it in the, um, in the other chat too so if you follow that link you can grab this this will get you a basic starter kit will get you into a membership with young living that means you get 24 percent off all of your oils so you can get i have that link there will take you i've got a whole you know all, all the stuff that i mentioned today is in there you can pick and choose what you want what you need and then if you do spend over 150 dollars tonight you will get a free luscious lemon hand soap it's a foaming hand soap it smells delicious i love it plus you're also going to get access to my ditch the toxins boot camp and access to our team facebook group with education and lots of specials you're going to get a weekly newsletter and a weekly text if you want it in it of different tips on how to use the oils and a whole lot more so if you want to get in on that it is a great, great, great uh, value. The starter kit is going to get you the two uh, Ninja Red, which is one of my favorite supplements to take. Some Stress Away, because who doesn't need any Stress Away, right? <laughs> In today's world, you're going to get some of the Thieves Cleaner there and actually the Thieves uh, Mints too. So it's a great little starter kit. If you have, if you have questions, let me know. Any questions at all, about the oils or about the membership just let me know uh give me i'll probably just go ahead and message me or just put a comment below with any questions you have either way and then um make sure you do comment because i have that giveaway until tomorrow at five o'clock i am going to be giving away four of the insect repellents the little single use ones so it's great because they're individually wrapped so you can stick them wherever you need them and the bottomless citronella. So I did mention some of the citronella uses before, but I'll tell you the one other thing I do love to use citronella before is uh, we go camping a lot. We have an RV. I will take a diffuser and I will stick it right outside of our door and I will diffuse citronella. It helps scare away all the mosquitoes and stuff. So if you've been camping, you know what I mean? Especially if you've been camping with kids like I have, they go in and out, in and out, in and out, and you end up with like a ton of mosquitoes in the camper while well, having this right by the door kind of scooches them away so the kids aren't you know going in and out with the mosquitoes all the time so i love love that that is a great use for that one so yep just to make sure before you know to get entered just comment below any comment will work 
and then I will draw the winner tomorrow night. All right, guys, thank you so much. If you have any questions, put, post them below. I will do my very best to answer all of them. If I'm gonna be starting to do a lot more of these classes, especially since I think, I'm hoping anyways, it looks like it has, <laughs> the uh, this new setup and this new uh, straight live streaming works. So as long as this keeps working, I'm going to be doing classes once a month. So if you guys wanna know about something or you want a class on the specific subject, let me know. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can get uh, information for when I do release new classes or new videos. Um, but other than that, guys, I have a wonderful, wonderful night and I hope to see everyone soon. All right. Bye.